Hello and welcome to Matt Parker's Math Solutions. I'm Matt Parker and the Math Solution this time is for the How Odd is Pascal's Triangle Puzzle. This video is two weeks late because when I recorded it, when I should have, the audio was just a terrible. I tried to fix it. Thank you everyone who sent in suggestions for fixing it. I tried to take the buzz out. It was just a mismatch of the mic and the camera. And I think, I mean, I had the camera plugged into power. So I think it might've been an earth hum. I could have tried to get rid of it, but I thought I'd just film it again. So here we are, that's what we're doing um, today. So this was the challenge for what percentage of numbers in the first 128 rows of Pascal's triangle are odd. Mm, really nice puzzle. And so uh, we got a whole range of answers. And so Deanna who makes the, uh, presentation here for me that I'm clicking through now, went through and found some of the more common solutions that we saw popping up. It's all variations on 26 point a bunch of stuff. And so then we went into the database and Oliver runs the database and they pulled out all the most common answers that were sent in. And you can see 26.49 is the most common answer. So it was interesting seeing what level of precision people put in because we left it such that you could put in whatever you fancied. You could just keep typing, um, I think it probably kept out at some point, but we didn't specify how precise you had to be. Most people thought two digits, that's plenty, followed by four digits, followed by a lot of digits. And you will see 15.49, uh, surprisingly common. And down the bottom, some more 15s. We'll get to those in a moment. But the correct answer was variations on 26 point stuff. And so we accepted any level of rounding on that. So uh, co here. Um, so one of the reasons why I picked 128 rows is because there are clever ways to solve that without necessarily having to do it in programming or a spreadsheet or something else. And Co here was all over it. They noticed that each time you uh, double the number of rows, going through your powers of two specifically, you get three times as many odd numbers. And so they're able to use that to scale up and uh, they can work out, because it's a triangle number, how many numbers there are all together. And then you can do these multiples of three to work out, powers of three, to work out how many are odd. And you can do it from there. So uh, really nice. And people, a lot of people did it with writing. So the handwriting of the puzzle award goes to Brent, who uh, worked it out by hand, and then put a little box around their answer. Great work, Brent. Love what you're doing there. Um, Catherine did it in a spreadsheet. Always a big fan. And they were quite clever, because a lot of people got uh, a bit bogged down in trying to do all the numbers exactly in a spreadsheet. And I picked 128 rows because it's just too many rows to do easily in a spreadsheet. They realized you only care if it's odd or even. So you can just mod two as much as you want. And then they formatted it to do E and O. And uh, they even use conditional formatting. Love what you're doing. And then they had a big tally with the percentage for each row. And they just read off 128 rows and got the correct answer. Great work, Catherine. Now Matt, Matt is a teacher in the United States of America and they did it in a spreadsheet as well. And you can see here, Sapinski is the Sapinski triangle, right? It's a fractal. They had never seen before that if you color in all the odd numbers of Pascal's triangle, you get Sapinski's triangle. And some of you, this may be news as well. I, the, the first time you learn that is such a wonderful moment in mathematics. And so the fact, that, so they started zoomed in on the spreadsheet and they did the conditional formatting and they're like, oh, well, okay, there's a bit of a pattern here. And they zoomed out and then suddenly they realized it was Sapinski. And that, I mean, that, that there, that's amazing. That's why we do this. Those moments when you suddenly realize two separate bits of mathematics are the same thing. And if we can set a puzzle that allows people to have that epiphany, I'm very happy. And never feel shame. Like, if everyone else is like, well, of course. Well, yeah, it's because they've already had that moment and they've forgotten the wonder the first time it happened. So, ah, amazing. Thanks for sharing that with us, Matt. Um, Lizzie, oh, this is our couple who always do it. Uh, coding versus spreadsheets. Spreadsheets, Daniel had a problem. So they hit the 15 digit limit on numbers in Excel. Big fan of limits of Excel, as uh, you know. And so um, what happened with Excel is it stops giving you the trailing digits. And so you get a bunch of zeros which means any number more, with more than 15 digits, it assumes is even because it ends in a zero. But it's not actually even, Excel's just run out of precision. And so that's where all the 15 point 
four nine or whatever answers were coming from. There were people who were doing it in Excel or something else with the same limit. I think some languages had this problem. I did it in Python, that was fine. Um, and so they missed counting a bunch of odd because it was no longer storing all the digits. So there you go. Ah, two of my interests combining. Um, so thanks, thanks for admitting that as well, by the way. Uh, always a big fan of people admitting their mistakes. Brian, just thought this was a great diagram. Love it. Top, top stuff. Um, Alex did the whole thing in theory, which is really nice. I'll link to uh, Alexander's paper below, and they got the correct answer. You can see there in the top chunk of 26.49. They then also, okay, I think we're back up again. Funny story, my phone stopped recording because I ran out of space. I had to delete, of all things, the video when I set the how odd is Pascal's triangle puzzle in my backyard. Anyway, so um, I'll get through the rest of this quickly before I run out of space again. So Alexander here did it in general, so you can see the 26.49 that they got correct. They also then did it uh, as the number of rows approaches uh, infinity. So there are infinitely many rows in Pascal's triangle, and as you approach that, the percentage that are odd approaches zero. So 0%, there you are. So in the infinitely many rows of Pascal's triangle, there are no odd values. But there are, but there aren't. Like the percentage is zero, but it approaches zero. <laughs> Maths, there you go, crazy stuff. Um, love that fact. And so uh, Florian here um, uh, did a plot, this is a log plot showing the percentage and how it goes down as you have more and more rows. And th those spikes, that's whenever you hit a power of two. And then a whole like flood of odd numbers comes in at once, and it's uh, it's amazing. What a sight to behold! It's one of one of nature's greatest spectacle: the migration of the odd numbers in the power of two rows of Pascal's triangle. Uh, so nice plot. There you are, excellent. And it ite itai. I should have learned how to pronounce that since the last time I recorded this video. Um, they did a plot log scale again, um, uh, powers of two, and you can see almost like like a heartbeat, but not a heartbeat. If, you, <laughs> if your uh, cardiogram looks like that, uh, seek medical assistance. Um, I recommend midlife crisis. And so uh, anyway, I've not seen this visualization before. Thought this was very cool. Thank you for sending it in, Strauss. And the coding mention of the puzzle uh, has been awarded to Eric this time in Python. Bit of a classic choice. Good job, Eric. And Herb, Herb did this whole document. I think I can link, I think I can link to this below. If I can link to Herb's document, I'll put it in the description below. They did a whole bunch of working out by brute force by hand. They had not done one of these puzzles previously. And so, and they thought they might have missed the boat. And so they thought they'd give it a go. They weren't sure if they were gonna get it right. They did get it right, spoiler. And in here, there are some great visualizations. Can I, I'll skip ahead a little. Look at that, there we are. It's a Pinsky triangle in Pascal's triangle. Classic. And Jen just did bigger and bigger values and showed once again it's approaching um, zero. They got to 10 to the negative seven, or percent. So 10 to the negative nine, just um, uh, zero to one. Anyway, it's tiny, it's tiny. Because of course, fun fact, in the infinitely large Pascal's triangle, there are no odd numbers. Um, and Gordon, I think you can hear that playing, um, Gordon did something unprompted a bit different. They went through and they did the first 36 rows and then they did mod 36 and then they matched the 36 values you get after mod 36 to the 36 notes in three octaves. Because of course an octave, oct in music, has 12 notes. Music. Get your acts together, music. Um, and so they use those 12 uh, notes, an octave, three octaves, 36 notes, mod 36. They use the mod two to determine if it's a long or a short note. So that's what you're hearing there um, as well. And so um, there you are. I, I, I thought I'd, I would finish by playing out this, in the word song feels a bit strong, this series of notes. Um, so there you are, and as always, thank you everyone for getting involved in the puzzle. A, uh, there will be a puzzle next week. I was meant to be on vacation next week. However, there's been a lockdown in the UK and it was suddenly against the law. So I'm not doing that. James Grime had offered to come and do the puzzle and they'd already recorded the video and it's a great puzzle. So James is doing that anyway. So James will be doing the one after that and I'm doing the very last one. So we're finishing the first season after 19 puzzles ending in our prime. And then in 2021, we may do them occasionally, one-off ones, we'll do them um, sporadically, but we'll see how we feel. 
um, at the time, and uh, it's been great fun doing these. So we still got James's next week, and then one uh, fortnight after that. And uh, sorry this video was so late, but I finally got it done, and here we are. The music's still playing. Oh, it's finished. That's the end of the video. Excellent. Thank you for watching this. I now um, need to get ready to do the solution video for the arranging cats and dogs. So I'm using a, a mic there on a cable. Um, uh, do that solution video uh, next. I'm gonna upload them at the same time. So I thought it might be nice if they look a bit different. So I'll do that one with a black uh, background. There we go.